Hello everyone, welcome back to more Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth. Last time we left off, we started Chapter 2, and I have an addiction to this game, so I'm playing it on the same day. Because I... Guys, I can't stop playing this game. <laughs> I, I go from playing this, then watching the Ace Attorney anime, back to playing this. I know that once we landed, I'm supposed to let the local police take over, and thanks to Miss Tenero and Miss Mealy, I was able to preserve the crime scene. But I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with Miss Tenero in private, so I'm left wondering just what she was up to. Why did she do what she did? There must be a way for me to continue my investigation. I haven't... Oh, wait! There's only one person I know who would refer to you in the f in full name. I've been expecting you, Miles Edgeworth. Ah, uh, yes! And that's her theme... well, sort of. Franziska? I thought you were still in Germany. I go where I'm needed. And wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Franziska von Karma. The daughter of my mentor, Manfred von Karma. She, like myself, is a prosecutor. Are you adding up this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I'm placing you under arrest. Wh what? It's quite frustrating, actually. I had hoped to exact my revenge on you in a different venue, but I'll have to take what I can get. Never thought I'd see the day when a disciple of the House of Von Karma would become a criminal. Have you no shame? Wh wait, there's all been a big misunderstanding. I didn't kill the victim. Misunderstanding? I heard all about the murder over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor, then beat him to death. Franziska, do you honestly believe that I killed the man? I suppose I should reserve judgment until after I've investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. Th that's as it should be. Ha! <laughs> I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from you of all people. To be perfect in every way, the fulfillment of that creed alone is all I strive for. Well, I have my own creed which I must fulfill, so why don't we solve this together? I have to get going. The crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. <laughs> Trust me, I have no intention to. Detective Gumshoe! Yes, sir! Too slow! Ow! Listen up, I'm leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess- don't mess up, understand? M Mr. Edgeworth? Supposed to guard him? Simple yes or no, detective. Ah, uh, yes sir! Understood, sir! You just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth, if you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. Are we clear? Now then, if you'll excuse me. Good to see you again, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. Thank you, detective. I believe in you, sir. You can lean on me. I'll get you through this. I have to admit I'm a bit curious as to what Franziska is up to. Maybe I should ask the good detective. Very well. In that case, I have a few questions for you. So how is the initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the coroner's office. And we're taking statements now, sir. That sounds like Franziska. She was always good at quick responses to a case. I'd say she was, uh, a little too quick, sir. Oh, how so? Uh, um, I rushed on over as soon as I got word of the affair, sir. But somehow, when I got here, Miss Von Karma was already here barking out orders at everyone. It was kind of creepy, as though she knew there had been a murder or something, and had come in advance to await your flight's arrival. It is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the blue. Plus, I still don't know why she's here in America. There must be some backstory to all of this. Hmm. Miss Von Karma just kind of popped up at the prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Thinking about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details. It's kind of top secret, so she can't talk about it. Even with me, sir. Knowing her, the only type of talking she likes to do is with a whip. Plus, I doubt the top secret part was what stopped her from talking to you, detectives. <laughs> Although, I wonder if her case has anything to do with mine. Anyway, that's about all the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we investigate. Yes, it is high time to resume my investigation, starting with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. Uh, okay. Oh, and we're just on the plane. Okay, cool, even though it was outside. Who cares? Oof, that was some lag. So you must be the captain. Why, yes, I am. And who might you be? I am the prodigy prosecutor, Franziska von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Uh, don't you dare, Captain. Wouldn't money on a dear captain to be much of a reputable person? Reputable. 
You know what else to craft? Uh, he was in the cockpit the entire time. I highly doubt he would know anything of use. Anyway, I'd like to leave that type of witness friends is gonna whip. Uh, rip. Is there anyone up here? Ah! Uh, told you. Ah, uh, wait for me! Oh, god dang it, not you again. Now, see here! Ah! Sorry, 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 I'm sorry! How long do you intend to hold me? It is impossible for me to be the criminal I told you! Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, it is you. Tell this man to stop stopping me from going. Time is money. I don't even have one second of wasteful time to spend. Did you finish taking a statement yet? Yep, all done, sir. I, I do not concern if you're not done examining the cargo hold. I want my cargo back. If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay. Art? What sort of art? Mr. LeBlanc is an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down in the cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. From folk costumes to stone statues, I sell all kinds of arts. Folk costumes? Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat. Kinda looks like that other piece of cloth. Does it? Oh, it does! Mr. LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Hmm? Oh, it's a Borginian cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose. <laughs> yes, of course. This fabric is so famous. Orders come from over the seas for more. Ah, okay. Then this is the cargo you were talking about earlier. No, no, no. My cargo this time is m much, much many gigantic. You, detective. When, when can I have my cargo moved? I can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. The stubbornness, you police. It's no good. And it is no good that an attendant refuses to exit the attendant's room, too. That attendant? I wonder if he's talking about Miss Tenero. What did you mean by that attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken to the attendant's room for her interview, and they still have not come out. They make no sign of coming out, either. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, quicker than her. Why is Miss Tenero's interview the only one that's taking up so much time? Miles Edgeworth, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain the cooperation of the flight attendants. Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Miss Tenero. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendants' room. <laughs> Before I do, you still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking. But you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Alright, let's go. Friends, this is logic. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious conclusion. The scene of the crime was here, in the very lounge the body was discovered. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found, the only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This unmistakably makes you the likeliest subject. <laughs> the likeliest suspect, Franziska. Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Or is my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Thank you, but your leniency is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break your line of logic fast. I think I'll just prove, but I wasn't the only one in the hall, you see, because of the footprints. Maybe. Okay, it's the suitcase itself, my bad. It would appear that you did not have all the information you needed after all. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves the body was moved from a different location. The killer used this suitcase to move the victim's body. Meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge at all. Now who's the one who's rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me. All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you would come to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. She's no better than that. Avon Karma is perfect in every way. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? As if there's proof of that. Where is the proof that the suitcase was moved around? Uh... Oh! That's what these slidey things are, of course! They spilled grape juice in front of the elevator. Yes, and I'd like to draw your attention to this area here. 
Where is the evidence that proves the killer dragged the suitcase through here? Take that! This mark here, wouldn't you say it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there is also grape juice residue on the wheels of the suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Not so fast. This still doesn't put you in the clear. Not by a long shot. You prepared yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit that turbulence. Okay, well, we're going to prove that wrong right now. <laughs> and then, you waited for the victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Then, while you are in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed in the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body within the suitcase. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you'd taken it from and pretended to be the discoverer of the body. Not a bad bit of logic for something you've thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? Then I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in the logic in one fell sloop. S sloop? Swoop. <laughs> in one fell sloop. <laughs> uh, can that be a word now? I like the sound of that. This is my sloop. Uh, 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 uh. That was easy. <laughs> The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal prowess is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic, essential tools that those who would stand in a courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. I Fly Piggy Bank is just such a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? The timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is important, and it was taken after the turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder when the killer fabricated this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After exiting the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then, the killer proceeded to pick up the bank from off the floor and took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my personage, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for the murder of Mr. Ackby Hicks. You there. Yes, ma'am. Other than this piggy bank, was anything else resembling a murder weapon found? We didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could use this one, ma'am. Most of the items that could have been used were broken during the turbulence. And the remaining items have all tested negative for any trace of blood. I see. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it appears your stall tactics are at an end. But it's possible that it's just hiding somewhere, sir. Hidden somewhere. Yeah. Eek! The criminal don't want to hide the weapon in a safer place. I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside that cousin suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence, which means that the real murder weapon is either still in the murderer's per personage, or is still at the real crime scene. There is one more possibility, and that would be that the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just... Let me finish! The killer took the bank out from the display case before the turbulence by opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time the glass pane on the door was broken. I'd say it's a perfectly reasonable line of, line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see. So that means that the killer had the key to the, dis to the display case. Franziska, the person you're talking about. Not so fast. I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain and granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is the sin of lying. Speaking of which, I recall that you also wish to speak with her. Yes. Very well, permission granted, but only if I can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her, but you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. Miss Tenero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. Oh, I guess Gumshoe's coming with me. <laughs> so you're the one that poked around inside the plane without the captain's permission. Deviating from the flight attendant's manual is very unbecoming, you know? What were you hoping to accomplish by doing that? I... I... Miss Tenero. Ah, uh, Miss Redworth, you're here too? Can you please help us and shed some light on why you did what you did? Alright.
Why did you lie about receiving the captain's permission like that? Because I didn't think I would be able to get his permission. What do you mean? The captain, he only has years for Cammy. I spoke with the captain a little earlier myself. He definitely seems to be rather taken with, mi with Miss Meal. Yes, and on top of that, I had mistakenly accused Miss Redworth of being the killer. I wanted to make amends. In that case, please allow me to thank you for what you did. Thanks to you, I was able to clear myself of all charges. Really? You were able to prove your innocence? Oh, thank goodness. It's Tenero, is it? There is one more thing I'd like to ask you. You were in, you were the, in the in-flight shop just before the turbulence, weren't you? Please answer honestly. Yes, I was. Now, why were you there? Well, I... Hmm, why the sudden hesitation? Francisca seems to have struck a nerve. All I did was go check up on the shop, like I always do. You're saying it was for work, then? Yes, I'm in charge of the shop, so I have to keep an eye on it. I don't have any reason to go there otherwise. After your visit to the shop, you paid a visit to this room, correct? Yes, I came back to freshen up and adjust my makeup. I'm sorry, but there isn't much else to tell. Hmm. Miss Tenero claims to have no reason other than duty to go to the shop. But is that all there is to it? You know, should ask her about that thing. Oh. What am I doing? I need to hit the present button now. If you could please take a look at this for me, Miss Tenero. Oh, that suitcase. Yes, about this suitcase. You are the one who designed it, correct? And I think I figured something else out about it. This suitcase is the reason you went to the shop, isn't it? There's nothing you won't find out eventually, is there? Won't you please tell me more about this suitcase? Whoa, I don't know what that was. But that sounded pretty big. Yes, um, I, well, I... I was interested in seeing how the suitcases I designed were selling. I, I know that as a service professional, I'm not supposed to care. But I really wanted to know. I was glad to see that it was the last one there. The last one there. So you're saying, Mr. Nero, that the suitcase in question was the last one? Yeah, they're just so popular they're practically flying off the shelves. It's not exactly the impression I got. The one in the shop is most definitely the last one. Well, we're currently looking at that suitcase. Really? Then I guess we sold all of them. Thank you very much for taking the last one. No, I, I didn't say anything about buying it. I didn't say you'll buy it. I, I'm sorry, I can't. B but why? I think it'd go great with your complexion, Mr. Edgeworth. It really suits you. I guarantee it personally as a service professional. Um, well, that is... How should I put this? It's hideous. Wh what? Hmm, maybe that was a bit too direct. Moving on, my issue with the suitcases isn't design. It's the number of them remaining. R remaining? There were two suitcases in the in-flight shop when I investigated it. Two? But that's impossible. I'm sure there was only one. Looks like your story has gen generated quite the contradiction. When I left the shop, I'm positive there's only one suitcase left. Something's amiss here. Look at the meaning of this in What could be the meaning of this inconsistency? Hmm. By the way, Miss Tenero. What is one of those suitcases doing here? Uh, that's... I thought you said there was only one left. Th that one is, uh... It's mine. I used it for a very long time now. She's used it for a long time. I think not. Miss Nero, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't lie to me. Excuse me? I don't believe for even one second that you've used this for a very long time. What proves that this hasn't been used for nearly as long as Miss Nero says? How about the receipt on it? <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty big, uh... Point. Tell me, Miss Nero, is it also your habit to keep the price tag for Steen on your suitcase? Ah! Uh. What is the meaning of this? Why would you lie about a suitcase? Despite having faith in a design sense. The sales number made a cry bitter tears. The truth is becoming increasingly clear to me. Mr. Nero, I think I understand. I know what you are trying to hide. Now then, this suitcase was originally in... Uh, the... In-flight shop? Seeing as how the price tag is still on this suitcase, one can only assume it was out on the floor for sale in the shop. And the person who bought this suitcase was... It was you, wasn't it, Mr. Nero? I hate to say this, but this suitcase that you designed... It hasn't sold very well, has it? 
He saw poorly this design that you poured your heart into was selling, and were deeply hurt. That's why you wanted to make it look like it was selling by buying it yourself. Isn't that right? Then, the reason you went to the shop and came back here was... I I'm sorry. All I really have is my job. I, I was overjoyed when my design was chosen. I thought that maybe, maybe I'd finally accomplished something. But the suitcase didn't sell. It's because of the design, isn't it? All because it's, as you put it, hideous. I can't say they chose a great place in which to sell them either. We weren't selling a single one, and they were just sitting there collecting dust. I felt so bad seeing them there, day in and day out, so I decided to buy one for every flight I worked. You buy one every single time you work a flight? I see. So in order to keep your resolution, you went and bought one today as well. Yes, and here's my receipt for, the, for that purchase. Hmm, this receipt is clearly timestamped 5.40 a.m. The truth is, there's still a bunch of them left unsold. They're planning to scrap the remaining ones at the end of this flight. Mr. Nero, one of these other suitcases... They sh oh, where? Sorry. They should all be down in the cargo hold. And the suitcases the killer used... Could very well have come from the cargo hold. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't think that the killer used one of my suitcases to... Yes, I do. The killer used one of your beloved suitcases... To move the victim's body. Huh? <laughs> How could they? The suitcases were meant to be faithful partners to our passengers on their trips. That's all I ever wished for them to be. Mr. Nero, is there any other way to get to the cargo hold other than the elevator? The only other way is just through that door there. And what about security? That door has no special lock installed because, just to enter this room, you need a special key card that only crew members have access to. <laughs> Which means that the culprit is someone who can enter this room, eliminating the passengers and leaving only crew members as potential suspects. I can't believe it. Yes, Franziska. Going on these wild goose chases, you're a disgrace to the Von Karman name. And what do you mean by that? The suitcase came from the cargo hold. That fact alone tells the whole story. Yes, which is why I said the culprit must be a crew member who used their keycard. Miles Edgeworth! You're proposing that the killer rode the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, I think that's the only realistic possibility. The o that other attendant, Miss Mealy. I asked her earlier, and she had this to say. Vince has got information on Miss Mealy. In order to go down to the elevator, in order to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold, a different keycard is required. A different one. Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Rhoda Tenero. And only you. Ah! What? Is this true, Miss Tenero? Yes, I keep that keycard in my locker at all times. Could you please show us that card right now? E yes, hold on. Ah! I, I don't believe it! What's wrong? The keycard, it's, it's gone! <laughs> Very clever, pretending that your card was stolen when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You really thought this through. W wait, it's not like that! You can tell us about what it's like down at the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am! Mr. Edgeworth. What's wrong? There's disbelief written all over your face. Franziska, I know that you are the lead investigator on this case, however... Hold it! Don't even think about wasting any more of my time! You know what the rule... You know the rules as well as I do. Evidence speaks louder than words. Even if this isn't a courtroom, that basic tenet still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. Oh, wow. To be continued? What? I'm 28 minutes into this. This isn't long enough for an episode. Alright, well, I guess we're playing end to part one. Because I don't think... I, I think they split into two parts from what I saw. I might be wrong, though. I guess we'll see. Hopefully this isn't, like, super long. <laughs> Ugh. Wow, so this is the cargo hold, huh? It's so big! This plane is a special model. It has both a super large cargo hold and an ultra lux luxurious first class seating. So this is the real scene of the murder. There is certainly a high probability of that, which is why we are here, correct? Okay, let's get investigating, sir. Begin investigation. Ah, see? One missing. Holy suitcases, Mr. Edgeworth! It's like an all-you-can-use suitcase fair! 
These must be all the leftover ones they couldn't sell. The ones the company is planning to dispose of after this flight is over. This paint job is really cool, don't you think? It practically screams artsy. Oh, why not purchase one then? I'm sure it will bring you much happiness. You think so? Then maybe I will. Let's see here. $1,200? I think I'll pass. Hey, Mr. Nero, I wonder why they don't sell. You don't, you need two jobs just to buy one. Hmm. Definitely looks like one is missing. Hmm, what is this brutal substance I'm stepping on? A bunch of glass fragments. Oh, wait. I can already piece something together from that. Ah. Well, that was fast. <laughs> Broken glasses, glass shards. <gasps> bum, 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 bum. Boom! I think we can safely conclude that these fragments are from a pair of glasses. And the victim was wearing a pair of broken glasses. Exactly what I was thinking. I'm sure that the shards will match up perfectly with the remnants of his glasses lens. Ergo, the victim was here just as I suspected. So you're saying that the real scene of the crime was here, sir? Isn't that what I've been saying for a while now? Oh, is it? I just didn't know that. Perhaps it's a bit too early to draw that conclusion. However, I believe that the probability has just skyrocketed considerably. All that's left is find the murder weapon. Cool. I don't even have any more logic stuff because I just finished everything. Keeping track of this many pieces of cargo must be very taxing on, taxing on the cargo crew. It sure brings back memories when I worked as a part-time mover, sir. I look in his eyes, he's waiting for me to ask about the rest of the story. But no matter how he pours on the puppy eyes, I have no intention of doing so. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's with the suitcase, pal? It's what the victim checked in, sir. This suitcase belonged to Mr. Hicks. I don't think he'd mind if we take a closer look. Uh, there's nothing out of the ordinary in here, sir. Wait, a file? And there's a photo of Miss Von Karma in it, sir. Looks like a profile on Francisca. Okay. Why would Mr. Hicks have had a file on her? Excuse me. All sorts of boxes are piled up here. This one says flammable, and this one says pharmaceuticals. This one says for exorcism use only. Just what kind of operation is this airline running? Ooh, I just love pushing the buttons on elevators and crosswalk signals. Here, you should give it a try, sir. Go on, push it. The elevator is currently stopped on the first floor, detective. It can't move. Oh yeah, I guess nothing would happen if you pushed it now. Well, nothing would happen normally, and anyway, without the special key card. Both the door to the attendance room and the elevator control panels are a key card, which makes it impossible for the passengers to come down here. You arrived at the scene of the crime before Detective Gumshoe, correct? And you then immediately began to direct this investigation. Seems to me that you were already here at this airport for something besides this murder. Yes, I was. I've been following a very large and involved governmental level international crime, but it's much too large for one person to take on alone, so I decided that I should form a joint investigation with Interpol. Oh, He's part of Interpol! Ah, okay. Interpol is involved. It's a top secret operation, so I really can't tell you any more than I already have. Well, that's all I need to friends us, so thank you. Let's just save just in case this game's like, no! Logic! Now, why would Mr. Hicks have documents profiling Franziska? Oh, I know. I bet he's a big fan of Miss Von Karma, sir. Franziska said that she had come to the airport as part of an Interpol investigation. Oh, maybe Mr. Hicks had heard she was coming here and he followed her. Detective, I think it's more likely that Mr. Hicks was, in actuality, Interpol agent Fix. I think Franziska has some explaining to do. Alright. Let's talk again. Truth behind Hicks. You came to this airport to rendezvous with the victim, didn't you? Nonsense! What are you talking about? We found a profile detailing information about you and the victim's luggage. I suppose it was prepared for him so that he could recognize you when he landed. Which makes him, not Mr. Hicks, but rather, Interpol Agent Hicks. Isn't that correct? I <sighs> should've known you'd figured it out, Miles. But it looks like they got, him t they got to him first. So you really did come here to receive an Interpol agent, then? Yes. Agent Hicks was on the trail of a very large international smuggling ring. He went undercover to investigate this crime, and it was I who put him on this case. I was supposed to receive a call from him on his cell phone once he had landed. I never expected to receive a call about his murder instead. I think we now have pretty def definitive evidence that Agent Hicks came down here to the cargo hold. But what was he doing down here, sir? There's nothing but luggage. 
Oh, I get it. Maybe he forgot something in his suitcase and came down to get it. Ow! Agent Hicks came here for a work-related reason. Of that, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure he's here to investigate the smuggling operation he was observing. Francisco, do you know exactly how he intended to pursue his investigation? No, unfortunately I was going to find out from him after he landed. I see. But this raises another question. Oh! Oh! Is it gonna... Nah. No, 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 actually. I... Well, maybe. I'll throw this out there. Um, is it... Are they gonna try and see if anybody's smuggling the eggs that we learned about in Ace, uh, uh, Apollo Justice, maybe? That'd be kind of cool. Nice little Easter egg. A normal passenger can't access the cargo hold on their own. Agent Hicks must have identified himself to a member of the crew and entered the cargo hold with that person who let him in. Yes, and then he was murdered here. These glass fragments in his broken glass are a testament to that. And then... The killer put Agent Hicks into one of the spare suitcases and... They entered the elevator, and while they were riding it up... The plane had that patch of turbulence. Because of the intense shaking, the suitcase popped open and Agent Hicks' body flew out. At the same time, his wallet fell out of his pocket, spilling its contents everywhere. Which explains why there was money scattered all over the elevator floor. Investigation complete. I think it's pretty easy to say who the culprit is at this stage. What? Really, sir? Hmm... I know what you're thinking, Miles Edgeworth. But the killer can be none other than Miss Rhoda Tenero. Definitive evidence. If it was a crew member, any one of them could have shown Agent Hicks the cargo hold. But the point to keep in mind is the keycard allows the elevator to come down here. The only person with such high-level access is Miss Rhoda Tenero. I'd say that's a pretty decisive piece of information, wouldn't you? I know what she's trying to say, but I'm not certain it's as simple as that. No, I think it was the other girl. I forgot to meal, mealy, chamomile. I, I don't get it. I don't get the puns in this game, guys. That is a fake. Stop right there, Miles Edgeworth. You don't have any proof that this is just a red herring. If you must keep on insisting that it's a fake, then what is the real murder weapon and where did it go? Speechless, I see. That's not a surprise. After all, you know that we've searched the entire cargo hold and came up empty-handed. Must be a way. There must be something that can help me rule out the piggy bank as the murder weapon. What should be examined further to help us ascertain the, authentic the authenticity of the weapon? Uh, I think the body. We really haven't talked about that at all. And that's the only thing I can think of. Franziska, I think you were too quick to jump to your conclusions. Oh, was I? Yes, we don't even have the autopsy results yet. How can I, how can I not say that you made a snap judgment when you have yet to even see if the wound on Agent Hicks's head is consistent with the murder weapon? Scruffy! Y yes, sir? Contact the medical examiner's office at once. I wish to hear the results of Agent Hicks' autopsy. Ah, yes, sir! Well, that was hard to figure out. <laughs> We've got a big problem, Mr. Redworth, sir! No, oh, it matches up perfectly, doesn't it? What is it, Detective? They're still doing the autopsy. They said they already know this one thing for sure. Report, now! The doc said that's one giant brute from a beating... From his shoulder down to his mid-back. From the victim's shoulder down to mid-back. Who's beaten over such a wide area. Well, I'd say maybe it's a sign the killer had a grudge against Agent Hicks. If it wasn't just his head, the killer went all out and hit him multiple times, sir. Alright. Scruffy, what is had a grudge against Agent Hicks supposed to mean? I well, that's, um... Was the wound on the victim's head consistent with the murder weapon, detective? Oh, well, they said they were still looking into that, sir. You're completely useless! Ow! Sir, I told you already, you can't go down there. No, you remove... You remove yourself from my way. Oh, what is all that racket? My luggage, my cargo, they're mine and I demand you to return them to me. We're still investigating the cargo hold. Please understand, have a little patience. I suppose there is no choice. Finally, I think he get... Hey, what are you... You have left me no choice but to use strong force. Ah! You won't get past me. Oh. This is... Wait, that's it. So that's what this whole thing has been about. Further, there is the matter of the key to the display case that held the murderous bank. What? 
After all, you know that we searched the entire camp and came up empty-handed. Was it this guy after all? He says one giant bruise from being re Oh! Of course! He was pushed off! Ah, I see. There we go. Allegedly, the killer struck the victim many times over, which is why there is extensive bruising over such a wide area. But is that really the correct conclusion to draw from the evidence? The bruises from his shoulders to the middle of his back is one continuous mark, which is more suggestive of a single blow to the back. If that's the case, then this piggyback, then this, then the piggyback is much too small to have caused that. Therefore, the murder weapon must be something far bigger. Okay, here we go. So, sizable weapon and. If we're looking for a rather large weapon, you'd think it would stick out. But so far, we haven't found anything that resembles a weapon of any sort. Perhaps, just perhaps, it's something we all overlooked from the very beginning. Because normally, it's too impossibly big to be taken into consideration. What? What was that all about? Was he trying to jump his way down here? Francisca! What? What do you want? I found it, Francisca. I found the real murder weapon. Y you did? He, he really jumped! We didn't realize until now, but the answer has been right in front of us this whole time. He might be hurt. We should go check up on him, sirs. There's that pompous attitude of yours again. You should learn to drop that habit. It's coming from a prosecutor with the habit of whipping everyone she comes across. Anyway, if you really are a prosecutor, then you'll back yourself up with evidence. You two aren't listening at all, are you? Come on, then. Show me this real murder weapon you speak of. The fact that they're saying don't have evidence to show makes me think that I don't. <laughs> I don't have any evidence to show you. Foolish reasoning for a foolish fool from a foolishly foolish fool meant to fool me. What do you mean by I don't have any evidence to show? Perhaps I should have phrased it as, that which caused Agent Hicks' death is incorporeal. Forgive me, but I do believe I have figured out what was the real cause of death. Free fall, of course, maybe. Yeah, free fall. The victim fell from a great height and subsequently died as a result. In other words, the real cause of death is free falling to the ground. He f, f fell to his death? Yes, this is the only plausible possibility. The victim has extensive bruising on the back of his head and back, and the only rational explanation for these injuries is that he fell to his death. B but the murder happened inside this plane. I know. Are you claiming that there is some place in this plane from which he could have fallen from? As I said earlier, the answer has been right in front of us the entire time. You... you can't mean... Yes, I do. The victim fell from the top of the stairs of this very cargo hold. What? Then... then... We're in trouble. We have a second death on our hands, sir. Hey, you! Tell me! You aren't... Tell me you aren't dead, pal! Quiet! Why are you screaming? He's alive! And there you have it, Miles Edgeworth. It's not possible that Agent Hicks fell over the railing to his death. That man is living proof of that. I suppose it's true that it's not possible, given the current circumstances. The current circumstances? What is that supposed to mean? Suppose a l that large piece of cargo wasn't there at the time. What would have happened then? He would have been a Virginian pancake for sure, sir. I suppose that man over there wouldn't, wouldn't still be breathing. But the reality is that the cargo block is there. So there's no point in entertaining your wild hypothetical scenarios. It may be then now. There is no proof that it was always there. Ha! As if there could have been a window of time when that giant box was not there. Ah, but there was. What? What can I use to show that it's possible the box is not always where it is now? Oh, come on. I'm not that dumb. You refueled in Republic of Zhangfa? Yes, this flight had a short layover in Zhangfa in order to refuel, but that wasn't the only reason for the layover. We also transferred some cargo. What if the box in question was only transferred onto the plane at that time? To further prove my point, let's take a look at what's next to the box in question. Ah, it's labeled Zhangfa Express. Correct, meaning it was loaded onto the plane in Zhangfa. Boom. Now, what if the box in question was also loaded on at the same time? It would mean the box was not here in the cargo hold during the Europe Zhangfa leg of the flight. 
making a clear drop from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death entirely possible. Ah, but your theory is still far-fetched. Then allow me a chance to prove how very likely my scenario is. First order of business will be to examine that piece of cargo in more detail. Investigation start? Yep, begin investigation. Got it, fam. Hmm, this is a rather large piece of cargo. There's a tag on it, sir. Let's see. A leaf red statue. Never heard of it. Nor do I. But all I care about is if we can prove it wasn't here at the time of the crime. Now let's get investigating, sir. No, 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 no. Look here, do not go touching my possessions without my permissions. Ah, d don't rush up on me like that, pal. Does this belongs to Mr. LeBlanc, does it? Let's see what else I can find out from him. I take it that this large piece of cargo belongs to you, Mr. LeBlanc. Of course it is mine. I shipped this fine piece of art from Europe. This leaf red statue is worth 10 million cents. No, maybe much, much more. Hmm, Mr. LeBlanc's reason for choosing this plane must have been the large cargo hold. 10 million cents? Oh, I suggest you stop trying to calculate how many packets of the noodles that makes, Detective. Darn, how did you do that? I feel like you keep getting better and better at seeing right through me every year. Though I grow with each revolution of the planet around the sun, I have the distinct impression he continues to madly spin in place. Hey, Miss Redworth, so that 10 million cents, is that in euros or in dollars? Does it really make a difference to our case? Mr. LeBlanc, there was a chance that your cargo was related to, the, to our murder case. I was wondering if you'd allow us to examine it a bit closer. It's a very valuable piece of art, so no, there will be no touching. Why Why do I think that's not right? Oh! Oh, it's not art, it's... Oh, oh, I get it, I get it. Uh, I see. <laughs> let's, let's think about that a bit more. <laughs> Mr. Blanc has something to do with the smuggling ring. And it's possible this fake statue was brought on board in Zheng Fa. I think I need to question him a bit further. There we go. Let's talk again, my friend. How about your statue, Mr. LeBlanc? I wonder if it might be a fake. What? How dare you say my art is fake? I suspect that your statue might be the target of an international smuggling ring. Don't say such fantastical things. Those thieves would not dare. I have the certification of my cargo right here. Do you mean the cargo certification document? Mr. Zinc LeBlanc, why didn't you say so earlier? Please show it to us at once. I can't read this. What does it say? It says as plain as day the cargo was put onto the plane in Europe. And there you have it, Miles Edward. Too bad for you. This statue is brought on board in Europe, just as it states in the certificate. No, that's... Which means that there is never a window of time in which the statue wasn't sitting there. I respectfully disagree. We can't discount the theory until I see the statue for myself. <laughs> then you have your wish. Look at it yourself and see I am right. This. I know I've seen this somewhere before. This is the Elif Red? This is the Elif Red? This is in this photo. Oh, wait! Oh. What the heck? It gives us such a feeling of art, I can practically smell it. The statue was a high amount of historic value. After it was unveiled in a museum in Europe, I brought it to this country to exhibit it. I believe a closer look is warranted here. So this is the infamous Elif Red statue. Hmm? What is it, Mr. Edwards? Did you find something? There's something wrong with this picture. We should examine it in more detail. Spot some out into any of the evidence I hold. Yes, it is. These eyes are awfully orange, don't you think? Yeah, and pretty. They remind me of sunsets when I was in grade school, sir. I don't think you see what I'm talking about. No, I do, but it's i its really like the color of the sun when it's setting, sir. Ah, the memories. I remember standing on that field, spinning with my arms until I felt ill. I don't care about sunsets. Focus, detective. What color are the eyes in this photo? Huh? Huh? Ah! Sir, they're red! As I thought, that statue is a fake. Mr. LeBlanc. What do you want? Do you still not know I'm a busy man? I allow you two seconds for your answer. The leaf red. I suppose this is your pride and joy, is it not? This is the biggest trophy on the on this European trip. Do you know why I wanted to possess this statue? The trigger the trigger starts 17 years ago. Better grab a chair, sir. Sounds like this is gonna be a long story. Mr. LeBlanc, I regret to inform you, and you have my heartfelt sympathy, but what is it? Sympathy? For what? You'll see. 
I'd like you to compare the eyes. The large fellow there has very bright and pretty eyes compared to you. I wasn't talking about the two of us. I meant the eyes of the statue in front of us and the one in this photo. Why the sudden yelling? Now that Oh. It is a photo of the statue on display at the muse museum in Europe. What? Now do you see Mr. Lunk? The statue before us is a fake. A uh, fake? I believe that even further examination will be required. Now that we have confirmed this is indeed a fake. There must be some sort of proof this was brought on board in Zhang Fa. Then I'll present to you evidence that will resolve the remaining contradiction. <sighs> I was using wrong evidence the whole time. I'm mad. There's clearly a contradiction here. What are you going on about? It's just a simple case of cargo cover getting stuck under another piece of cargo. Ah, uh, that's not possible. But it is. It shouldn't be this way, but the statue is on top of the cloth. Supposing the neighboring piece of cargo is brought on board in Zheng Fa, there is no way that any part of it should wind up under something from Europe. Which means that this fake statue was smuggled on board in Zheng Fa. Then what about the cargo certificate? Let me ask in return, what about Agent Hicks? Why did he come down here in the middle of the flight? There's only one reason why. Secure proof of smuggling activity abor abor aboard this flight. I thought I said abroad, sorry. <laughs> So you say, but I don't believe he had anything he had to do that mid-flight. We could have just as easily inspected all the cargo after the plane landed. That may be true. However, you have it backwards, Francisco. Sure, Agent Hicks could have waited until after the plane had landed. But he had a reason for coming down to the cargo hold. Suppose he had found the fake at the airport. It would have been after the swap had occurred. At that time, the suspicion would naturally fall onto the new statue's owner, who would have no way to prove that the statue was switched without his knowledge. Which means there is someone involved who is forging or modifying cargo certificates. Oh, good lord, that was annoying. I kept presenting the the certificate as contradictory, but oh well. I guess because that's still true, we just moved it. I guess the victim knew the real version of this was gonna be was gonna get nabbed, huh? Yes, while this photo could be seen as nothing more than a simple souvenir, it was in fact taken to be used as a reference document later on. Next, Agent Hicks had to secure proof that the smuggling had taken place. He came down here to take a picture of the cargo hold. A rather empty one at that, right before the fake statue could be loaded on board. Bone of the hold missing a valuable piece of cargo would be proof enough. After that, all he had to do was hold the Zhang Fa cargo crew and arrest the smuggler. Exactly. This only goes to prove my theory. The statue was not in the cargo hold during the Europe Zhang Fa leg of the trip. There would have been enough height from which Agent Hicks could have fallen to his death. Officer, move the statue immediately. I want a thorough examination of the floor underneath. Now! This one, Karma, ready to report my findings. Go on. To move the leaf red statue out of the way, we tested the area under it with luminol, and there was a reaction. I see. There was a reaction to Luminol, an indication there was blood on that spot. Ah, uh, can we stop looking at it now, sirs? It would seem that my deductions were correct after all. I suppose it would appear that way. The culprit cleaned the blood up well. How do you think the killer did that? How did the killer clean up all the blood? Why isn't that obvious? It's the, it's the cloth, obviously. That's what it was there for. Oops. Take that. The killer used the bloody cloth I found inside the suitcase to clean up the mess. You see, they didn't need to clean up all the blood before the plane landed in Zheng Fa. Yes, because otherwise the cargo crew would have discovered it during the layover. So you guys are saying that the murder happened before the plane landed in Zheng Fa? There's no other conceivable timeline for the events of the murder. But if that is true, then that throws a certain person's testimony to doubt. If the murder occurred before we landed in Zheng Fa, then this becomes highly suspect. Um. Oh, Miss uh, Meal's suspect because she said she saw him, right? Recall Miss Mealy's testimony about Agent Hicks in regard to when we departed Zheng Fa. I saw Mr. Hicks sitting in here at 5am, you know. She claims Agent Hicks was alive at the time of the service calls, but... That totally contradicts the facts, sir. But why would she lie about something like that? I think the only person who can answer that is Miss Mealy herself. To be continued. Alright, well, now we have enough to finish a full episode. I was surprised how short the middle was there, but... Oh well. I'm going to end today's episode here for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't enjoyed, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. So we're going to see more of this awesome, awesome game. We're going to be playing it till we finish it, because that's just how I roll. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Peace out!